Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome this morning to our service. I'm excited and thankful to the Lord for the opportunity to welcome all of you, our visitors, our friends, to our service this morning, which we bring to you in the precious name of Jesus. As we start our service off, I'd like to have a word of prayer, and those of you who desire a prayer, you can indicate by uh, sending a comment. We will certainly keep you lifted up before the Lord. We're grateful for this privilege to share with you the gospel. But as we do, let us bow our heads with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory. For you alone, O God, are worthy. And this day that we come before you, at this hour, we come, Father, to hear your voice. Speak through these lips of clay. Let our eyes be open, our ears unstopped, that we may hear from you. Father, we pray this morning for the motherless, the fathers, widows, the orphans, the hurt, the hurting, the hungry, the naked, the homeless, and the destitute. Father, you know their situations, and you know their circumstance. And this great message that you've placed on my heart to deliver, let the anointing of God fall, let all who hear be touched, and let souls be saved and backsliders return to the fold. The Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the honor. We bind Satan and all of his host, and we decree and declare that no weapon formed against this message will go forth and be successful. We cast Satan out and all of his demons with him and release your spirit. Father God, to have its way now, in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. And somebody say with me, Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be alive today? Just think of the alternative. So many are complaining and so many are discouraged and fraught with the cares of this life. And yet think about all the thousands of people who have been afflicted with this COVID uh, virus. And so many did not even wake up this morning. They've gone the way of the grave. And so you have, and I have, a reason to praise the Lord. And with that being said, we're going to open our Bibles for our devotional scripture this morning. Uh, would you find with me Luke chapter 8? Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48. That's Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. You have those scriptures. We're going to follow along with me, if you would. Again, that's Luke. Give me an opportunity to find it. Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. And a woman having an issue of blood, twelve years which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter, and they that with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee, and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him and before all the people, For what cause? she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I'll read that last verse again. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And Jesus is doing the same thing today, saints of God. He is healing, but many times he would have us to know it was our faith that moved him, his, our faith that caused us to be made whole. May the Lord add a blessing and a hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. Well, let's look at our announcements for today. As you can see, we want to wish a happy birthday to one of our precious members, Deaconess Doris Vance, who will be celebrating her birthday on December 19th. Deaconess Vance, we wish you a very happy birthday in the name of Jesus. Watch night service again. We want to remember and remind everybody that our watch night service will be observed on December 31st. Mark your calendars. December 31st. We will be observing our watch night service. I want you to be in attendance with us in the name of Jesus. I want to continue and ask you to hold up in prayer those who are suffering due to this COVID-19 and other uh, misfortunes. I just feel so sorry to hear so many people are on the verge of losing their homes and uh, children and families uh, being displaced, ev evicted. So saints, as I said, starting out, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to give God praise for. So when you feel like nothing's working for you, just remember there's somebody worse off than you. In Jesus' name. All right, want to welcome all of our visitors and listeners and also our, our members to our service today. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you for being a part of this ministry God has given us. And so, uh, welcome. We're going to give you a, a great big arm full of praise and, and worship and thanksgiving to you for being with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just before we get into, go into our service, we want to lift our morning offering. As you can see, uh, you can give online. Uh, you can go to our website or greaterstpaulgsp.com forward slash donate. And we have various means for you to desire to sow a seed, uh, to pay tithes if you don't have a home church or your offering, whatever the case may be. We want to thank you for supporting our, our ministry. And those of you who choose to mail in a check or what have you, you can mail it to Greater St. Paul Church, 1602 Woodland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43219. 43219. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for your support of this ministry. Without your support, we couldn't do the things that we do. So, as we get ready to give our offering as unto the Lord, I want to pray this prayer of confession that we pray over our offerings. We, we have God thanks for them, and we do this in remembrance of Him. And so, with your offering, let us pray over it now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we confess this day unto you, that we've come into the inheritance that you swore to give us. We're in the kingdom of Almighty God, the land which you provided for us through Jesus Christ. We were sinners serving Satan, but we called upon the name of Jesus and you heard our cry. 
You delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear Son. Jesus, as, as our Lord and High Priest, we bring our tithe of our income to you that we may worship you, Heavenly Father, with them. Father, rejoice in all the good that you have given us in our household. We have heard your voice and have done according to that you've commanded us to do. Heavenly Father, as we bring to you and honor you with that which is rightfully yours, we pray that your blessing be upon it. And Father, as you look down from your holy habitation, to bless us as you said in your word, let us repeat after me, I believe that I now receive all of those blessings according to your word. For this is my confession of faith. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for your giving, amen, as you're doing that online now. I want to give thanks and praise and worship uh, to all of our greater St. Paul Church family, uh, Elder Leonard, uh, James Leonard, his wife, Sister Doris, Sister Eloise Summers and her daughter, and praise God, Annette Griffith and others, my precious sister there in Dallas, Texas, and family here in Ohio and all around. Thank you so much for being a part of our service today in Jesus' name. Well, it's time for the Word of God. It's time for the Word of God. And so I'd like you to find in your Bibles as you see on your script on your screen we're going to be taking our text from numbers chapter 7 i'm sorry numbers chapter 20 verses 7 through 13 again our text will be taken from numbers chapter 20 verses 7 through 13 I'm going to use a companion text, and that will be found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 3. Proverbs 13 and verse number 3. All right, follow along with me. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the people together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation unto the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Amen. Now let's go, saints, to the book of Proverbs, the wisdom book. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 3. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 3. It says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. 
He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. For he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. I've chosen from this text the subject, Loose Lips Sink Ships. Loose Lips Sink Ships. Now, my scriptural references, which I'll be taking you through pretty much in the order that I have them listed here, and, and then allow the Holy Spirit to inject what he would have extra, there is St. John chapter 15 and verse number 5. So with your uh, pen and paper, uh, you can write these verses down because I'm going to be referring to them as we deliver this message. Also, Numbers 20, 12 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 4. Then from there we're going to Hebrews 9, 24 through 28. Then Exodus 17 and 6. As well as Isaiah 42 and 8. Isaiah 42 and 8. Loose lips sink ships. Give you the history of this uh, text going back to uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 7 through 13. The children of Israel had arrived in the desert of Zin, near a city called Kadesh. They came upon this place where there was no water for the people nor their herds. It's also the place, if you remember history, that uh, Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, she died in this place. And as the custom of the children of Israel, when they ran into a rough spot, they began to complain and murmur. And in this case, it was no different. They, they proclaimed, uh, complained and murmured to Moses and Aaron about a lack of water. They felt it would have been better for them if they had died as other Hebrews had died before them as opposed to being in this place in the wilderness where they thought they were going to die of thirst. It's interesting, if you follow the Hebrews' history in their journeys in the wilderness, they always complain when times got hard. And it's much like people today. There, there's a lot of complaining in in. in uh, it's unfortunate it's even in the body of Christ a lot of people are dissatisfied a lot of people are, are murmuring complaining about the rough times and brothers and sisters as I said earlier when you think about the number of people who are in ICU units hospitals are overflowing people who have been stricken with this uh, virus many of them are having lasting repercussions so if you woke this morning and you were got out of your own bed and you're in your own house and you're able to dress yourself and be able to, to take in some breakfast if you did, you have a lot to give God praise for. But these people, for some reason, they were murmurs and complainers. And if you remember in the Word of God, God hates complaining. God hates murmuring. And in the case with the children of Israel, and they were in the wilderness, many of them died because of their complaining. Many of them felt that it had been better for them if they had stayed in Egypt. So at this point we find Moses, where we're picking up the text, Moses and Aaron go before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle, and there they fall on their faces. And as they're there in this prostrate position, the glory of the Lord appeared to them in a cloud. And Jehovah God told Moses and Aaron to bring the people before the rock where they were. And here Moses was to take Aaron's rod and speak to the rock, and it would bring forth water for the people to drink. 
Now Moses, when he brings the people to the rock, where this miracle, this supernatural event is going to take place, here's where things for him start to go downhill. Because he brought him to the rock, and you hear him saying to the people, he calls them rebels. <laughs> he didn't call them children of God, he calls them rebels. And he asks them the question, must I bring the water to you? Now here's where Moses began to fall apart. Moses takes the glory to himself. But when, you, when, when people get under duress, when people get under stress, they're, they're apt to say certain things, they're apt to do certain things. If they were in their right mind, they would probably do the opposite. But Moses, under duress and the stress of the people complaining about his leadership, he brings them to the rock, and, and he doesn't say children of God or children of, of, of the Most High. Instead of that, he calls them rebels. And he says to them, must I also fetch the water for you? Here's the point that I want to make. Moses took too much glory to himself. God was the one who was going to provide the water, not Moses. He wasn't going to be the one to, to bring it forth to them. God, Jehovah God, was to be the one who was to be instrumental in this supernatural event that was to take place. Remember in John 15 and 5, that's one of the first scriptures I have for you there. It says, for without me, Jesus speaking, for without me ye can do nothing. So Moses couldn't have brought forth that water. He didn't have any power within himself to do anything to feed their thirst or to quench their thirst. God was the one who was going to do it. So instead of speaking to the rock, which God told him to do, he struck it twice. Watch this now. He was supposed to speak to the rock. So you're, you're, you're seeing some things here. I hope you can grasp this. Because here Moses is under duress. And he's starting to, to, if I use this expression, he's starting to fall apart. Now God told him to speak to the rock. But he didn't speak to the rock. What he did, he, he took his rod and he struck the rod twice. Now having been struck twice, the rock began to bring forth water abundantly. But now watch something. Watch something here, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. God speaks to Moses and Aaron, and he says to them, going to Numbers chapter 20, verses 12 and 13, that's your reference. Numbers 12 and 13, give me an opportunity to turn there. You'll find these words. And Jehovah God speaks to Moses and Aaron, and he says, Because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Watch it again. Let's look at it again, because you're going to learn something here. Open, open, open your spirit, open your mind to, to receive what God is saying, because the things that are happening aforetime were written for our learning. And something that's interesting about the house of God, the will of God, is that God will show you errors that others made so you don't have to make them. Notice what he says, Because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Moses and Aaron lost the opportunity to take the children of Israel into Canaan land. Why? Why did this happen? Because Moses took and went outside of what God had told him to do. And I wonder how many of us are in that position right today that we 
are not where we ought to be because we haven't followed the command or the will of the Lord completely. How many of you are, are sitting right now in a place you ought not to be because you didn't do what God told you to do? Let's read it again. Because you're not, they're not going into the land of Canaan because they believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. They lost out on going into Canaan land because they disobeyed the voice of the Lord. He said, this is the water of Meribah. That word Meribah in the Hebrew means strife. It means strife. That's why they called it the, the water of Meribah. It was the, the place of strife. Because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified in them. There are at least two things. There are at least two things that stand out I'd like you to take note of. Moses was told to speak to the rock. Watch this. Speak to the rock. But did he speak? No, he didn't speak. What did he do? He struck the rock twice. Now, that if you didn't know your Bible, if you didn't know Scripture, you would wonder what was the problem with that. Well, that was symbolic. That rock was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me prove it to you. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 14. You see that there on your scriptures, your scripture references. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. Did I say 14? I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 4. Alright, notice what it says. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. See, that rock was a type. It was a spiritual type. It was the spiritual rock that followed them. Now, he tells us what that rock was. Paul tells us what that rock was. And that rock was Christ. So, that rock was a type of Jesus Christ. Now let's go for another reference because we're going to let Scripture define itself. We're going to allow the Scripture to, to, to interpret itself. Let's go to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, and verses 24 through 28. Now this is a little deeper, and so I'm going to explain it to you. Don't get, don't get carried away because I know sometimes the writings in Hebrews are a little difficult to understand. I'll explain it to you. Just follow along with me. It says, For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Now yet that he should offer himself often, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often, there's that word often, watch that word often, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, once, in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sins by the sacrifice of himself. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once, there's the word, once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time with unto salvation. So what, what, what this rock was, this rock represented Christ. 
And the fact that he smote it twice was a type, of, if, if he if could have been allowed, it would have been a type of Jesus being sacrificed twice. That's what Paul is explaining here in the book of Hebrews. For Christ is entered, not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us, not yet that he should offer himself often. Not that Christ should have to be sacrificed often. So when he smote that rock, that rock was a type of Christ, and that Jesus was only to sacrifice himself for us one time. So Moses, in striking the rock twice, was a type of Jesus being afflicted for us on several occasions. But as you know, the Word of God tells us he was offered once there on the cross. So what did Moses do? He allowed the people to get under his skin. And he referred to God's people as rebels. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, there, there are many people, even in pulpits today, who have allowed the congregation to do certain things or say certain things or act in certain ways that have caused them to become sour their ministries are, are ministries that are hardened and the, the, the sermons are not uplifting. It, it's almost like they're, they're beating the people over the head from the pulpit. And preachers have to watch that. You've got to watch that. Preachers have to watch it. We've got to watch it. You can't allow Satan or people to get under your skin. Because if you do, you'll say something out of turn. And that, in the sight of God is not what he's looking for his children to do. He allowed Moses, the second thing that Mount, uh, Moses allowed himself to do, he got into unbelief. He got into unbelief. In, in speaking to the rock, in his mind, it would not have caused the rock to bring forth water as it had in the past when he struck the rock. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 17 and verse number 6. Exodus 17 and verse number 6. Now notice, see, God told him to speak to the rock. But here in Exodus, notice what God told him before. He said, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite or stri uh, uh, strike the rock, and there shall come out water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So what do I say when I say that he got out of faith? He got into unbelief. Because when God told him to speak to the rock, in unbelief he didn't know and believe that speaking to the rock would cause water to come forth. Now this is the great man of God, Moses. But he's no different than in many of us. When we're pressured, when we, we're under stress, we're apt to do things, and sometimes we won't even believe the Word of God. And this, in this particular case, when God told him to speak to the rock, somehow he got out of faith, got in unbelief, and felt, well, I did it before this way, so I'm going to do it again. So in, in his anger, he caused the rock to be smitten twice. And brothers and sisters, it's hard to operate in faith when you're discouraged and when you're frustrated. It's hard to operate in faith when you are frustrated and you're discouraged. You've got to stay in the presence of God. I found by experience, I found by experience, when the enemy gets on me or comes against me, if I haven't been prayed up, if I haven't been fasted up, the enemy will come against me and, and I'll start thinking things that are negative. I'll start thinking about this and about that. And the next thing you know, I've gotten out of the Spirit. And I've found by experience, I've got to stay in the Word of God. I've got to stay on my knees. I've got to be seeking God continuously. And I was telling God one time, I said, Lord, as much as I know of the Word and know of you, if I have times like this, I imagine the people of God, they must also experience this. And so, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I've come today to let you know that you especially, 
in uh, these last days, in these times of confusion and stress and strife, people are at one another. Amen. You are going to have to get before the presence of the Lord. It's, 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 it's your life, your spiritual life is dependent upon it. You see so many people falling by the wayside because they become weakened in their walk. And here it was with Moses. He had become discouraged. He would become frustrated. And so Moses, he failed to give God the glory for the giving of the water for the people to drink. He failed to give God the glory. He inadvertently drew attention to himself. And let me tell you what God and how God feels about that. Let's go to Isaiah 42 and 8. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 42 and verse number 8. Isaiah 42 and 8. He says, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And so God, why he was upset with Moses, because Moses had drawn attention to himself. He was acting in the eyes of the people like he was going to, one, bring them the water. Notice what he said. Must I also fetch the water for you, you rebels? No, Moses couldn't fetch the water. He couldn't, he couldn't uh, feed, uh, quench the thirst of over three million people. There was no power in him to do that. Amen. But he got discouraged. He got outside of himself. And if it, if it weren't for God, the people would have looked to Moses and thought that he was the one who was providing for them water to quench their thirst. Because of one minute of frustration and indiscretion, Aaron and Moses were forbidden of the Lord to enter into the promised land. Notice that. One incident, one incident of, of striking that rock instead of speaking to it caused Moses not to be able to enter into the promised land. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I say the same thing to you. How many of us, how many of us should have been further along than we are because we didn't give God praise, we didn't give God glory, we didn't do what God told us to do. Amen. And so if the great man of God, Moses, could have been kept from entering the promised land because he didn't do what God told him to do, do you think God would treat us any different? Oh no. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What are some of the lessons? I think there's some lessons that we maybe can see in the in this text so these are the, these are some points that i saw you know i'm sure as you read this and study it you'll see for yourself that there's some things that god would have you to draw and, and learn from this don't allow people and trouble and stress to get you out of the spirit don't allow people trouble and dis and stress to get you out of the spirit when you look at in the book of first corinthians you, you in study the history of, of the children of israel notice how many times they murmured and when people get on in in stress and they get discouraged oftentimes will start murmuring what did they do what was the first thing they did when they didn't have their way, didn't find water, didn't find what they were looking for. What do they say? Would to God we had stayed in, in Egypt. Would to God we had continued in Egypt. You know what that tells me? It says the same thing in, in the house of God. Sometimes people who have been in the church for a while, when things start happening contrary to what they expect them to be, the first thing they'll think about, oh, you know, when I was in the world, things were so much better. When I, before I got in church, I had plenty of money. I had plenty of this, that, and the other. Why do people start thinking that it was better in the world 
than it is for them in church. Because had it been better for you when you were in the world, why did you come to church? You came into church because you were looking for something better than where you were. Now let me tell you something. No man putting his hand to the gospel plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's what the word of God says. No man, Jesus said, no man having put himself to uh, put his hands to the gospel plow and look at back is fit for the kingdom of God. You've got to do as Paul, you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Because the devil's looking for, he's waiting for some event to cause you to get discouraged. He's looking for something to cause you to complain. And the moment you start complaining, you do two things. One, you fall out of, of favor with God. Number two, you open yourself up for the enemy to come in and have a heyday with you. Don't allow people. Don't allow circumstances. Don't allow the cares of this life to get you out of the spirit. The people of God, especially, are nothing other than a brother or sister. I will say that again. You probably didn't catch it. I said the people of God, especially those in the church, are nothing more than a brother or sister. What I mean by that? What did he call the people when he told them, must I also fetch this water for you? What did he call them? He didn't call them people of God. He called them rebels. And sometimes in, in the church, you found people who have hurt one another. And then what do you know? They, they try to find somebody that they uh, can gossip with. And what you know, they, they start talking about one another in the church, and, and it's not no longer a brother and sister. They got some other name for them. Amen. And when you do that, there again, you fall out of favor with God. God wants you, he said, the, the, the first commandment, the first and greatest commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy, thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And he said the second is like this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. There are many in the body of Christ who have, who have come out of the church. When I pray for backsliders, many of the backsliders have left the church because they got hurt in the church. If you read the epistle of John, you'll find John talks about murders. Amen. He's not talking about somebody who's committed uh, homicide out in the world. He's talking about in the church by talking and harming and speaking ill of a brother or sister. In other words, many of them, you have basically spiritually mur murdered them. Amen. And so we've got to get out of that. Everybody in the church, no matter what they've said to you, no matter what they've done to you, they're still your brother or your sister. You've got to stay higher than that. You know, the Word of God says, uh, evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupts good manners. What is he saying? When you start talking about people in the church or outside the church, amen, start calling them outside of their name. I could give you some names. You know what they are. Amen. You get outside of the spirit. And that's why it was, was the downfall of Moses. He got outside of the spirit. He started speaking out of turn. Instead of calling them, praise God, the children of Israel, he called them rebels. Amen. And God was not with that well pleased. Now, the next point that I want you to take out of this. When God gives you specific instructions on how you to deal with the matter, don't take it upon yourself to do the thing the way you want it done. That's why many today, amen, myself included, I should have been, praise God, further down the road. But I did something God told me not to do. He told me to depend entirely on Him. And somehow, Praise God, I started looking around at people and, and doing this and doing that with people. And the next thing you know, where were the people when trouble came? Nowhere to be found. If I had did what God told me to do, and he said, depend entirely on me, I would have been further down the road. But I've repented of it. 
I've asked God to restore me. And so today, brothers and sisters, amen. I'm not allowing people or circumstances to cause me to keep my eyes on the Lord, off the Lord. The Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. That's what you ought to do. You know, in the, in the book of, of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse number 5, it says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. Uh, amen. You've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't allow frustration or things going on around you to cause you to get out of favor with God. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your dependence on God. Because today, with all this insanity, amen, I've never seen, and I'm, most of all of you, never seen times like this. Amen. Where have you ever seen a time where we can't even get one president out of office and the other in without mass demonstrations? I just saw in the paper all out of a rally yesterday several people stabbed. See, this thing has gotten out of hand. Amen. It's gotten totally out of hand. Why? Because people have gotten out of common sense. Amen. Not even God's sense. They've got out of common sense. Uh, amen. Even in the church. The church ought to be at the forefront of this thing. I'm so glad today to be able to preach a message like this because we need to have people of God to get fixated back on the Holy Spirit. We need to get people fixated. The church ought to be the one leading the parade. The church ought to be the one uh, bringing this virus under control. Amen. Somebody said to me recently, how come we don't have the power to go in these ICU units and these hospitals and raise up these people? I'll tell you why. The reason is the church has gotten away from its roots. The church has gotten away from the things that God called us to do. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. No, we're busy preaching everything else and the power the glory of the Lord has departed from the church and so we've got to depend on some vaccine and many people today aren't even sure they're going to take it and so brothers and sisters I want to conclude my message by saying you can think anything about a person or a situation but until it comes out of your mouth it is a thought that dies unborn Amen. This is what I'm talking about with Moses. Had he never, praise God, called the people rebels, had he never spoke, uh, struck that rock twice, he could have seen Canaan land. And so, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, amen. That's why I use for the subject today, loose lips, sink ships, keep your mouth shut, keep your eyes on the Lord. And no matter what, don't allow evil thoughts and communication to come out of your mouth and cause God to turn you away from your destiny. Well, praise be to God. I trust in the name of Jesus that I said something under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit today that has been a blessing to you. Again, amen. We've got to get our, our, our spirits. We've got to get our mouths. got to get our total being in submission to God and let him let whatever he's told you to do whoever he's he's spoken to amen through this message or maybe before this message he's told you there was an action you need to take there was something you need to do don't try to make head sense of it and try to figure it out what you need to do is do what God told you to do amen exactly the way he told you to do it Amen. Well, praise be to God. That's all I've got for you today. I trust in the name of Jesus someone's been helped, someone's been encouraged. And just before, again, we go off the air, I want to pray for any of those of you who have um, an unspoken request. Remember, there's no distance in the Spirit. I want you to just to look to the Lord as I pray this prayer for you. If you're unsaved, I want to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. I was in the situation like yourself. 
Amen. I was out there wandering. Amen. But somehow I heard a message, something similar to this, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I gave my life to the Lord. And I want to say to you, it was the best decision I ever made. The best decision I ever made. If you're unsaved, the best decision you could make is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want you to invite him in. I want you to say uh, these words, Lord Jesus, I've, I've, I've sinned. I've done that which I know I shouldn't have done. And I've lived a life that is not pleasing to you. But I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Receive me into your fold. Father God, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name. If you, if you said that and meant it from the bottom of your heart, Jesus just welcomed you in to the family of God. If you're a backslider, I was a backslider once. Amen. And someone I heard, heard a message about the saving grace of God and the goodness of God. And I came back into the fold. That was 44 years ago. 44 years ago I came back into the fold. And I want to tell you something. Those 44 years, I've never once gone back into the world. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. Praise God. And the end of it is fire and brimstone and lake of fire. And I certainly don't want that. None, none of that, neither do you. So I want to invite you to return to the Lord Jesus Christ. Return to him today in Jesus' name. He's welcome. He's standing welcoming you back into the fold. Now for someone today, praise God, who has a, a request that you don't have uh, me or a, a minister in your midst, I want you to know there's no distance in the Spirit. And if you just raise your hand as I am, I'm raising my hand in agreement with you. The Bible says if two of you shall touch and agree on anything, I touch and agree with you now in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this privilege of praying and interceding in behalf of all those who hear my voice. Father, give them, give them the desires of their heart. Bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, brothers and sisters, as we go off the air, I want to invite you to come back on Tuesday night with us, Tuesday night at 7.30 for our weekday Bible study. At 7.30 p.m. we'll be online. You can watch us on our website or live stream or Facebook. We invite you to share with us the rich word of God. And for those of you who maybe missed the service or missed one of our uh, recent broadcasts, you can go to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. God has blessed us with our own YouTube channel. And look under, or search under Harry Davis Ministries. Harry Davis Ministries. And uh, our sermons are for the past um, several weeks. Uh, we'll be there and on our YouTube channel. Amen. Look to see you. Praise God in the, the house of God via online service the next time. Now for prayer, call us at 614-253-2272. If you desire prayer, call us. Amen. We well, thank God today for all of our, our precious visitors and friends. Sister Roberta Brazier, there in Alabama, God bless you, so good to see you, uh, amen, and all, all my other precious saints, bless your hearts, bless your heart, thank you so much, well until we see you again on Tuesday night, may God bless you real good in Jesus name.